I am happy to welcome you all to the second evening satsang of this present UFO in spirituality. Yesterday, as it was the first evening, the satsang was more in the form of a welcoming and a greeting and general sharing of information regarding this retreat and previous retreats. And in addition to mentioning about these various matters, we also spoke a few things about what this retreat constitutes, is it a negative step or a positive step and what exactly it constituted. And one of the things we consider and we were able to see was that coming away from a certain environment and certain atmosphere and certain surroundings where there are many factors that draw the mind out and scatter it among things, many factors that make the mind overactive or very restless. Coming away from these factors, one is able to obtain the benefit of a different type of surroundings and situation where those disturbing factors are absent or minimal and there are many positive factors contributing to a gradual restfulness of mind and contributing to an easier possibility of bringing our mind inward, indrawn, and making it rest upon higher ideas and higher thoughts and ideas. Even though coming away from those disturbing factors is an important aspect of a retreat, but that is not the main aspect. Because we bring ourselves away from those negative and disturbing elements specifically in order to obtain an opportunity and occasion to go deeper into ourselves. So this objective, this purpose of wanting to go deeper into ourselves and get a greater understanding of our real nature, our true identity, this objective and this purpose is the more important factor. That is the less important factor, minor, secondary factor. But we do that in order to do this primary and more important task of spending a period of a few days in total immersion into a relatively spiritual state so that our entire complete mind, heart, attention becomes totally focused upon this more important and very, very vitally necessary process of growing in self-awareness. It gives us an occasion and a creative opportunity 
or giving a flip and once again intensifying our spiritual awareness and also what is equally important is serves to confirm our conviction that the way of life we have chosen the direction in which i am moving is okay is quite right there is validity in it because i am not alone i find that there are many educated and intelligent and knowing persons they are also moving in the same direction they are also choosing the same pattern of life and i am happy now i know i will not have any more any doubts or misgivings whether i am in the right direction or not now i am perfectly convinced that i have chosen correctly and i am moving rightly this is very important and especially in such a program organized by the divine love society all the more this is so we come to this conviction spontaneously spontaneously by ourselves because in this special organization there is no one is preaching to you or no one is coming and telling you oh this is the right thing this is what you must do no one is trying to uh, convince you or no one is trying to uh, what's that influence your thoughts or no one is trying to uh, push you in any particular direction certain truths and facts are placed various varieties and you are say look here this is what we are sharing this is what has come down to the human world ancient times thousands of years many many centuries and every century every generation this has been tried this has been once again experience this has been proven correct so time honor and time tested and proven to such place before you and you said you are welcome to think well and benefit yourself so there is no specific uh, attempt either to try to convince you or to influence you or try to uh, push you in a particular direction it is totally absent it is open and you are given the full freedom of receiving something and thinking about it and if you it if you are convinced accepting it if you think it's no all right okay it is not for you so there is this freedom of choice there is this openness and there is this spontaneous natural way of allowing to see the truth you are exposed to certain truth and allowing to decide what you will do about it in terms of its relevance and meaning to your own life in your daily life <clears throat> this is the unique nature of such programs it varies this is so because of the universal vision of beloved the worship of holy master gurudev swami shivan ji his broad mindedness and his great large hearted approach to all things and it has been so with the divine society right from its very beginning when it was first founded in january 13th of the year 1936 oh next day is the diamond jubilee ah you know that next january ah. and right from the outset 
Gurudev proclaimed these truths and he said, whatever is suitable to you, you accept into your life and benefit yourself. His main objective was highest human welfare. He wanted that each one of us should improve, become better and better, and rise above our imperfections and attain perfection. He wanted that each one of us, every day, must rise higher and higher on the ladder of evolution, and that we should live in such a way that every tomorrow finds us better than we are today. That was his one human evolution and an ascent to a state of perfection, which he firmly declared is possible, is fully possible. So it is a period when to an intense absorption in a spiritually oriented living together with other seekers is a period when through an intense immersion into a spiritual orient, spiritually oriented way of living together with other seekers, within a short time we seek to give ourselves a special uplift, see, in our see, living of our life, in spiritual life and the inner life. And a special impetus is imparted to our spiritual progress. And the second benefit we should seek to obtain to satsang, in addition to intensifying our own spiritual awareness, see, in giving a push and an intensification of our own spiritual awareness of ourselves, a second benefit that we should seek to gain is to this change and transformation of ourselves, we should create a newer state of our relationship with the world around us, newer state of our relationship to people and things, situations and experiences. To such enhanced spiritual awareness, we are enabled to find greater harmony with in our relationship with life around us, we are able to have more feeling of appreciation of other point, people's points of view, and we begin to feel a sense of unity which was not so very easy previous to our spiritual renewal. Because the, the authenticity or the genuineness of this change has to be reflected in our outer life. Because that is a proving ground. And therefore, that becomes to us a valuable field where the thing that we have acquired positively, that positive gain is now to be applied in our day-to-day -day life, within the domestic setup, within our own neighborly setup, in our social circles, in the place where we are to work with our colleagues, superiors, inferiors, and everyone. So this, this, they, these different fields of our outer life become to us the valuable place for exercising our spirituality. See? 
Thus, in this way, we have a subjective renewal and subjective enhancement, see, a benefit within us, and we have also an objective, see, gain, an objective benefit, see, in our life together with others. So it is not merely subjective only, it begins to be felt and it begins to be expressed and manifest in our objective life of our outer relationship to this world outside us and life around us. Therefore, as people of satsanga and people of spiritual life and practice, you must see whether these twofold changes and twofold positive benefits are experienced by you after each satsa, the experience of a spiritual retreat and continuous satsang. You must observe your life carefully and jot down what are your experiences if, if these benefits are being pursued by you, if they are being experienced by you. And so the plus and minus, what you were before, what you were after, you must carefully make a note and try to be guided by your own findings about yourself, both in your subjective inner life as well as your objective outward life. This is the way to see that the progress is made permanent, the gains or benefits obtained are made permanent. Now, in addition to these two aspects of the result, of the outcome and the fruit of spiritual retreat and satsang, there is a still third aspect which are different and beyond both the subjective as well as the objective. That is, in addition to these two benefits or these two results of fruits as an outcome of satsang and spiritual retreat, etc., there is yet a third dimension which results from such retreat and such satsang, which go even beyond these first two aspects of the gain that we obtain, namely the subject to gain, benefit and objective, it goes beyond both. It is an altogether different dimension of your existence, a different level, a different aspect of your life. And that dimension, that third okay, aspect is what continuous satsang can do to you, what such spiritual riches can do to you in terms of your relationship directly with the cosmic divine source and origin of your being. What is its effect upon your relationship to God? Better knowing and understanding of yourself is one thing, and better improved relationship with this outer world and beings is another thing. But more than both these is what it can do to your unique relationship your situation with regard to yourself and that supreme transcendental being who is your beginning, your middle and your end, who is your source and invisible support and your ultimate goal, with whom you have had a relationship even when the world did not exist, nor 
you did not exist in the world. Neither you were existing in the world, nor the world was existing. Eternal is your relationship with that supreme being. And in that third dimension of your life, as an immortal soul, what you gain from such such some some and such spiritual occasions is the third and even more important factor which you have to always keep in your mind. The even greater importance of this third dimension, third factor, will become quite plain and clear to you when you begin to think that your relationship with this outer world, with life around you and all things and beings, in the ultimate analysis, when you come to think about it, this relationship is of a temporary duration. It is not of a permanent duration in time. It was not there before, and after time, some time it is not going to be there. Therefore, it is a temporary phenomenon. In time, it is not the permanent situation. It is a passing situation. Therefore, due to this fact, the more important factor is that which is timeless permanent, eternal, therefore much more real than this temporary state of relationship with this outer visible world. And this, to understand this point does not require great philosophy or great study or great learning. A little observation, a little thinking will immediately make it quite clear to you is make it quite plain and clear to you that when you ultimately come to think of it, we are all travelers here. See? And our relationship with anything here is only for a certain time only. It is temporary, transitory. Now, Understand this very clearly. Even though it is temporary, while it exists, it is important. Because that is your immediate reality. That is your immediate experience. And you have to make your life in the midst of that experience. Therefore, it is real. And it is important. And you have to give full attention to this while you are in it. It is not to say that it does not exist, it very much exists, and you have to recognize its existence and give its importance that is due to it. But then, while you are giving it its importance that is due, doing it with all interest and enthusiasm, you are doing it with the full knowledge that important as it is, it is not permanent. This knowledge inside is the most important thing, is the most valuable possession a human individual can have upon this journey of life. This knowledge brings about the creation of an extraordinary atti attitude within you towards all things. And that extraordinary attitude is You do not commit the mistake of giving over-exaggerated over importance to anything here. You say, yes, this is very important, this is very valuable, but then there is something much, much better, much more valuable, much more important. Therefore, while I am engaged with, in the middle of these things, I must not forget it. I must not miss it. 
So you do not commit the blunder, you do not commit the mistake of neglecting the main important purpose for which you have come into this world as intelligent, rational thinking human being. You do not miss it. Thus, in the midst of all your very important occupations here, right in the midst of it, you have also this progress use, spiritual ascent of your spirit towards its ultimate goal. The inner process, the vital inner process was summed up in a beautiful ancient prayer in India. From temporary unrealities towards the great reality. From the darkness of spiritual ignorance to the great light of supreme divine wisdom. From birth and death consciousness of this earth identity towards the experience and awareness of eternal life and immortality. Asatoma Sajgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mityoma Amrsangamaya That was the ancient prayer to indicate what your interior should be in the midst of earthly activities, duties and obligations. And the second important thing that this extraordinary change of attitude brings to you, I will just now tell you. The second important thing that it does to you is you are no longer oppressed and tyrannized by outer things. They fall into their proper place and they don't come and forcibly take the central place of your consciousness. You clearly see and recognize that all these things are necessary, they are important, but I have not taken birth for these things. And I have come for the attainment of a greater goal for the achievement of a higher purpose and for obtaining a supreme eternal objective, God experience, illumination, enlightenment, liberation. This is the main purpose of my birth here. Therefore, I will always give it first place. In my consideration, this will be top priority in my consideration. And while I give the time and attention to all these other things here, I will be wise. I will not allow them to come in the nature of an obstacle stopping my progress towards that great goal. I will utilize them under my control. I will not allow them to control me and make me a slave and a servant. 